and this is the astrological forecast for Gemini for 2023. You're going to like this. You're one of the um, two best signs to be over 2023. Not because something wonderful is going to happen, although there's, there's some nice stuff going on in the background, but because there's nothing majorly difficult happening for most of you. Now, I stress most of you. Um, let's have a look. Let's, let's see what's going on. Firstly, the once every year annual new moon in Gemini will be on the 18th of June. Healthy new moon shouldn't be a problem. The Gemini full moon will be on the 27th of November. And that's an absolute stinker. And we'll come to that one later. Mercury will move into Gemini on the 11th of June. And it will leave on the 27th of June. So it's only going to be with you for a couple of weeks. Nevertheless, that, that second half of June period, 11th to the 27th, great time for any travel, contracts, negotiations, business deals. Venus will pass into Gemini on the 11th of April and leave on the 7th of May. Now, Mars. Mars has been in Gemini since September 2022. It moved, it, it, in fact, August 22. It stood still at the end of October and went retrograde. And as we start the new year, Mars is still going retrograde. Mars is particularly impacting in early, in fact, throughout January on the lives of those people born around the 30th, 31st of May and the 1st of June. And if you're one of these people straight away, January is not an easy month. You could easily end up saying or doing something you later regret, taking impulsive action, getting your buttons pushed, or just being overly impulsive, rash or headstrong. So if you're born at the very end of May and the very and the first day of June, count to 10 during January, it's a, it's a dodgy month. After this, Mars will start moving forward in Gemini. And as you get into February, Mars will pass directly on top of the sun of those of you born from the 1st to the 10th of June. So you're all going to get a lot more energy and be a bit more volatile during February. And then as we get into March, Mars will pass on the chart on the sun of those of you born from the 11th of June, 10th, 11th of June onwards until you get to the end of March, at which point Mars leaves Gemini after seven months and leaves you alone. I'm delighted to say. Uranus is in your next door sign of Taurus, not affecting you, not impacting on you, no sign of major life-changing drama for most of you. Um, Pluto in Capricorn, hardly affecting you. One or two of you, particularly those of you born around the 19th, 20th, 21st of June, you might find that this year is a bit itchy and scratchy, that there's a few things going on at a minor level in the background, but I don't see it as a big deal. Neptune is going to be hammering some of you. Neptune in Pisces is going to be squaring the sun. Now, and uh, at the start of the year, Neptune's finishing off its business with those of you born around the um, 14th of June, 13th, 14th, 15th of June. The confusion, the nebulousness, the fatigue of this last year is coming to an end by the time you're into March. But for those of you born shortly after this, by which I mean from the 16th, 17th, 18th of June, then Neptune's going to be squaring your sun over the coming year. Possibly, I might even stretch that to a minor degree to the 19th of June. Maybe. 16, 17, 18, possibly 19th of June, Neptune squaring your sun in 2023. This can lead to 
confusion, nebulousness, uncertainty, tiredness, fatigue. There's things going on where you're not being told the complete truth. I'm not saying you're being lied to, but you're not going to be told the complete truth. There can be a degree of misunderstanding, certainly tiredness. You will go through days, occasional single days over the coming year, where you wake up and you think, I'm absolutely exhausted, at which point you phone work, you say, I can't come in today, and you go and have a hot bath, and then you go back to bed for the rest of the day, this is not illness or disease or infection, it's fatigue. And if you give into it for 24 hours, you'll be fine. And if you fight it, you'll get taken out for a week. This will happen three or four times over the coming year. So listen to your body. If there's any potential issues around um, thyroid or eyesight, I would expect a minor degree of deterioration this year. Saturn is also going to be squaring the sun of a number of you this year, but this is those of you born at the start of Gemini. Saturn's going to be squaring the sun of those of you born from the 21st of May right the way through to about the 28th of May. And if you're one of these people, then this is a year of getting your house in order, weeding, pruning, streamlining, clearing the decks, letting go of things, people, situations and environments that have passed their sale by date and have reached the end of their shelf life. Now, this doesn't start until mid-late March. OK, well, middle of March. But by mid-March, all of you Gemini's born in May are going to suddenly become aware of Saturn's energy. And it's a lousy time for growth and expansion, but it's a great time for consolidating and establishing, getting your priorities right and becoming more effective and efficient and sharper. And you can choose to be a sledgehammer or you can choose to be a laser. And if you do it Saturn's way, where you do everything the hard way and you don't take any shortcuts, then you'll get it right. Having said that, before May, before, sorry, before the middle of March, Saturn is smiling on some of you. Those of you fortunate enough to be born from the 14th of June onwards, then the first, I don't know, nine weeks of the year, you seem to be in a good space to be able to make plans, choices, decisions, actions should work. Saturn's not always bad news. Jupiter starts the year in Aries, a sign that you're actually very compatible with. And all of you, all of you are going to feel Jupiter's energy in the first 17, 18 weeks of the year before Jupiter moves into Taurus in mid-May. So during January, February, March, April and the first couple of weeks of May, all of you in order, depending on how late in Gemini you're born, will go through a week or two where you feel as if that there's windows of opportunity opening up around you, that there's chances happening. Now, you will see opportunities. And if you take them, you'll do well, you'll thrive. And if you don't take them, you lose nothing. This is a freebie. But stay astute, stay alert, because there will be chances and you should do well with them. For all of you, this is not that difficult a year, but there is one, just one, real stinker and this is going to be the full moon in gemini on the 27th of november that will be the moon in the start of gemini the sun at the start of sagittarius but mars will be at the start of sagittarius as well so a lot of you particularly incidentally those of you born from the 22nd to the 27th of may you're going to find that as you get into that late December, late, late November period, you are going to get your buttons pushed and you could easily end up saying or doing something you later regret. So all of you, please be aware that that full moon at the end of November in Gemini, it's not something that's going to build up and be in a gradually increasing problem. It's going to suddenly be like the zit on top of the, the pimple on top of the boil. So it's going to be a, a bit of a big zit. Uh, and it's a short term, short but sharp. Watch out for that date. But apart from that, with the exception of those of you that sat in the Neptune squaring, you're, you're, most of you are in a pretty good space. Have a great year. See you later. Bye.